Today we're diving into a game changer in the world of weight loss. Forget everything you've heard about calories being the only thing that matters. We're talking about something way more powerful, your hormones, specifically insulin. I had the chance to dig into the work of Dr. Benjamin Bickman, a metabolism expert, and let me tell you, his research flips the script on obesity. So grab a coffee, maybe hold off on drinking it just yet. We'll explain why and let's get into it. All right, let's start with a question. Why do we gain weight? Most people would say, oh, it's simple. You eat too many calories and boom, you gain fat. But Dr. Bickman, who spent years studying metabolism, says that's not the full story. In his lab at Brigham Young University, he's literally growing fat cells in petri dishes. Picture this. These cells are swimming in a nutrient soup surrounded by all the calories they could ever want. But here's the crazy part. They stay tiny, teeny little baby fat cells. They don't grow at all until one thing happens. Can you guess what it is? Insulin. The moment they add insulin to that petri dish, those fat cells start ballooning up. Six hours later, there's a big old lipid droplet inside them. 12 hours later, even bigger. This is huge, guys. It's not just about calories. It's about insulin calling the shots. Insulin is like the gatekeeper of your fat cells deciding whether they store fat or not. Now let's bring this to real life. There's a condition called diabolemia, and it's a heartbreaking example that proves this point. It's mostly seen in young people with type 1 diabetes, who need insulin injections to manage their blood sugar. Some of them figure out that if they underdose their insulin just a little, they can eat as much as they want and stay super lean. Why? Because without enough insulin, their body doesn't store fat, no matter how many calories they're eating. Now, I'm not saying this is healthy, it's dangerous, leading to things like hypoglycemia and ketoacidosis, which can be life-threatening. But it shows us something critical, you can't get fat without insulin being elevated. Calories alone, not enough. So what does this mean for you if you're trying to lose weight, obsessing over calorie counting, or killing yourself with intense workouts might not be the answer. The real key is managing your insulin levels. Stick with me because we're about to break down how to do that with something called the insulin trick. But first, let's talk about why mornings are the secret weapon in this battle. Okay, let's talk about what happens when you wake up. Ever heard of the dawn effect? It's this natural hormonal surge that kicks in around 4 a.m. A few hours before you roll out of bed, your body starts pumping out cortisol, a stress hormone, to get you ready for the day. Cortisol tells your liver, hey, let's break down some stored glycogen and release glucose into the blood. This is totally normal. It's your body's way of giving your brain and muscles the energy they need to start the day. But here's the catch. When your blood sugar rises, your insulin levels go up too. And in the morning, your body is actually a little more insulin resistant. That means any food you eat in those first couple of hours after waking is more likely to be stored as fat instead of burned for energy. Yep, you heard that right. Those pancakes or that sugary cereal you're eating at 7 a.m., they're more likely to end up on your waistline than fueling your day. This is why even people who practice intermittent fasting like skipping dinner might not see the results they want. Mornings are the danger zone for fat gain because of this hormonal combo of high cortisol and insulin. So what do you do? Do you just avoid food forever? Nope, doctor. Bickman has a super simple strategy to outsmart your hormones, and it starts with what you do first thing in the morning. Let's get to the good stuff, the insulin trick. This is Dr. Bickman's practical, no-fuss way to keep your insulin in check and set your body up to burn fat instead of store it. It's not about starving yourself or doing some crazy diet. It's about making smart choices, especially in the morning when your hormones are predictable. Here's how it works. Step one, wait it out. When you wake up, don't sprint to the kitchen. Give your body 20 to 30 minutes to let that cortisol and insulin surge calm down. Your body's already giving you a burst of energy in the morning. Use it. Go for a quick walk, plan your day, or maybe do some light stretching. This isn't about burning a ton of calories. It's about letting your hormones settle so your breakfast doesn't turn into fat storage. Step two, rethink breakfast. When it's time to eat, skip the sugary, carb-heavy stuff. I know, I know, cereal, bagels, and orange juice are breakfast classics, but Dr. Bickman says modern breakfasts are basically dessert. All that sugar and starch spikes your insulin, especially when your body's already in this insulin-resistant morning state. Instead, go for something high in protein and healthy fats. Think eggs with avocado, a veggie omelet, or some Greek yogurt with nuts. These foods keep your insulin stable, fill you up, and tell your body, hey, let's burn energy, not store it. Oh, and make eating a mindful moment, savor the smells, the textures, the whole experience. It's like a little reset for your metabolism. Step three, hold off on the coffee. This one might hurt, coffee lovers, but hear me out. Dr. Bickman points to a study from about 20 years ago that showed caffeine can make your insulin work harder. 
when you eat carbs, your blood sugar climbs and insulin steps in to bring it back down. Add caffeine to the mix and your insulin has to work way harder to clear that glucose. In the morning when your cortisol is already pushing more glucose into your blood, that coffee can cause a bigger insulin spike than you'd expect even if you haven't eaten yet. So try waiting an hour or two before your first cup or at least skip the sugary creamer or pastries with it. Now let's talk about cortisol a bit more because it's not just about the dawn effect. Cortisol is tied to your stress levels and your sleep and it can seriously mess with your appetite. If you're not getting enough sleep, say less than seven hours a night, your morning cortisol levels can be two or three times higher than normal. That's like your body thinking it's under attack and it pushes your insulin up too. Here's where it gets wild. Cortisol doesn't just affect your metabolism. It messes with your brain. It crosses into areas like the hypothalamus and amygdala, which control hunger and reward. Cortisol ramps up proteins called NPY and AGRP, which make you hungrier, especially for carbs. It also boosts dopamine, making you crave those super tasty high calorie foods like donuts or chips. At the same time, it blocks leptin, the hormone that tells you you're full. So you're hungrier, craving junk and less likely to feel satisfied. Sound familiar? To fight this, prioritize sleep, aim for seven to nine hours of good restful sleep to keep cortisol in check and try some stress busting habits like meditation, deep breathing, or even a quick yoga flow. These little tweaks can make a big difference in how your body handles insulin and appetite throughout the day. You might be thinking, okay, what about fasting? Isn't that the ultimate way to lower insulin? And you're not wrong. Fasting is super powerful. When you fast, your insulin drops and your body starts tapping into stored fat for energy. It's like hitting the reset button on your metabolism. But let's be real, fasting isn't for everyone. It takes planning, discipline, and sometimes it's just not practical for your lifestyle. That's where the insulin trick shines. It's like fasting's chill cousin. You don't have to skip meals for hours or overhaul your entire day. Just make these small strategic changes in the morning, wait a bit before eating, choose insulin friendly foods and time your coffee right. These tweaks give you a lot of the same benefits as fasting, like lower insulin and better fat burning without the hardcore commitment. So why focus so much on the morning because it's the one time of day when you can predict how your hormones are acting. Later on, stress, meals, and life in general make insulin levels less predictable. Get your morning right and you're setting the tone for better appetite control, more energy, and less fat storage all day long. This isn't a magic pill or an overnight fix. Dr. Bickman's insulin trick is about making small sustainable changes that make weight loss easier over time. You don't need to count every calorie or spend hours at the gym. By working with your hormones instead of against them, you're giving your body the tools to burn fat naturally. Ready to try it? Here sits your action plan for tomorrow. When you wake up, take 20-30 minutes before eating. Use that time to move, plan, or just chill. Swap out the sugary breakfast for something like eggs, avocado, or a protein smoothie with no added sugar. Wait an hour or two before your coffee and skip the sweet add-ins. Make sleep a priority, aim for at least 7 hours. Be consistent, these small changes add up. Alright guys, that's the insulin trick, a simple science-backed way to take control of your weight by mastering your hormones. What do you think? Are you ready to give it a shot? Drop a comment below and let me know your go-to breakfast or if you're trying this out tomorrow. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who needs to hear this. Let's keep the conversation going and I'll see you in the next video. Stay healthy, stay strong, and I'll catch you soon.